Hello everyone, Carlos here. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about a recent attack that happened against TreeCX. They are a VoIP solution company that have a soft PBX in addition to a desktop client that allows you to connect to the PBX so you can have your telephony wherever you go. What we are going to be talking about is a supply chain attack. Somebody was able to gain access to their update files and modify those files. So when the desktop client updated its installation, malicious code was downloaded. And then this code was very nifty in terms that it waited seven days before actually reaching out to the internet to be able to download its payload. The way that it did it is by downloading a benign executable in a DLL. And then that DLL will actually decrypt in memory a section of itself that would then allow it to connect out to the internet to a GitHub website and download its payload. Uh, now, this is being covered by many vendors out there. I'm going to include in the description many links to multiple antivirus vendors in addition to security company write-ups. So it's a very fluid situation right now, but I don't want to focus so much on the different techniques that were being used and the minutia and how everything was encrypted is it DDRPK or not, because we're seeing some of the IOCs actually match some of the behavior of the DPRPK. But I want to bring into context that supply chains attacks is something that we're beginning to see a lot more. So this means that we need to have a very good way of monitoring our entire environment for those outliers. In this case, when we look at some of the data, we can see that this was first reported inside of the forums for Tree CX, where customers were actually saying like, hey, Sentinel-1 is triggering on this. Uh, Tree CX, can you take a look and tell me if this is a false positive or not? In addition to this, uh, if we look at a post in Reddit by CrowdStrike, we see that CrowdStrike is actually saying that, hey, we also detected this, we detected the malicious behavior, and our customers were reporting this to uh, TreeCX itself. TreeCX has really not replied very quickly. There's some debate on how well they're managing this uh, situation or not. Uh, but what I want to show you is that CrowdStrike is actually providing quite a good list of IOCs. And this brings up the question, how prepared are you to leverage IOCs when they surface in a situation like this. Let's say that you're a Tree CX customer and all of this information just came out. So there's a series of domains that are being used for command and control. There are certain files that were dropped on disk. Have you gone through the exercise of setting up everything so you're able to query your systems to be able to determine if, an ex if a file actually exists on that file system? Are you keeping the different logs to then be able to look at the execution and determine what executables were ex run on the machine, what are the command line, what are the parent command lines, as some of this data starts surfacing. And it's not only on Windows, we are also seeing that the attacker, it's actually had a custom payload also for Mac OS. So we're also seeing that it's cross-platform. Uh, the technique is very similar in this case. But uh, in the case of CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike actually has a very nice feature and I'm not sponsoring CrowdStrike in any way. I'm just pointing out that CrowdStrike allows you to then search across your entire hashes. Same thing for connections. Uh, this is something that also other vendors provide. Microsoft a Defender for Endpoint actually provides similar capabilities that we're able to search for this type of IOCs. Now it brings the question, have you gone through that exercise? Have you done that tabletop where all of a sudden you trigger one or two benign applications and then you search across the, your data lake of information that you have from your vendor to see if you're able to track the specific file. Now jar rules are being put out there by Florian and many others in the community. Are you able to leverage those? How quickly? For example, did you know that Nessus actually supports running jar rules that you can upload a zip file filled with different jar rules and execute that as part of vulnerability scan? Many people do not. Many people have actually not gone through that exercise of doing this type of threat uh, activity inside of their environment of doing threat hunting. 
So yeah, this is good information that you should consider and that you should take into account nowadays. Um, also, when your antivirus solution tells you, hey, this is malicious, do you have the capability in your team to look at those files and look at the different IOCs that the AV reported? How much information is the AV reporting? Have you looked at your solutions to see how can you leverage that information? Have you done exercises when you have taken those files and probably sent them over to another system to detonate and look at the different IOCs while they're creating? Have you gone through that? Many organizations have not. Uh, just my take on this, I don't, I don't want to add to it in terms of like, look at this other IOC that surfaced, look at this other one, because it is a very fluid situation. We're going to be starting to see more data and more data coming out there, both in Twitter, from different vendors, from their blog posts, uh, and all of them are covering multiple IOCs and multiple hashes that you can use to find all of this. And I just wanted to kind of like take a different approach and go over have you gone through the exercise? Have you prepared? Have you practiced this? Is this something that you're going to schedule to develop the, T the SOPs to be able to perform this type of action in your environment? I, I believe that you should. Now the question is, when can you schedule developing these SOPs? When can you practice the S SOPs? Or are you going to practice and validate that they actually work? So there's a lot of things that we need to think about process, discuss internally, and work out how does it best feed our organization because every organization is completely different. Every security team is completely different with different skill levels, different resources, different budgets, and different cultures actually inside of the, those organizations. So just a little food for thought there for you. Again, I hope that you find this information useful. Remember to like and subscribe. And here at TrustedSec, we're ready to help whenever you need us.